Well, I've called the town of Muddy Ankles home for near about 75 years. It got its name long about the time the first settler, who later became our founding father, Mickey Deerstalker, stepped into a water hole near his lean-to and broke his pelvis. He died face down in the mud. And when his Indian squaw, dances with leg that is not good, found him, he'd managed to scribble the name Muddy Ankles on a rock in his own blood. Must have thunk of it whilst he was lying there. Anyhow, as was the custom in them days, Mickey's body was stuffed with sun-dried straw and painted blue. Then, dances with leg that is not good, propped him up against a sycamore tree with his finger a-pointin' at the sun. The story goes that he stayed in that same position for near a week. Of course, by that time, most of the hogs in Mickey's barn had fallen ill from the smell. And Mickey was dragged off and sold to a fellow named Jedediah Culpepper. He'd thunk about opening a general store, but he, he didn't have no wooden Indian to put outside. Well, that's where Mickey came in. A little fresh paint, a little lye, a haircut, and a loincloth. And Mickey spent the next twenty-some-odd year appointing at Fat Ethel's Bordello across the street. I later found out Mickey was a virgin, so the irony was a little hard to swallow. But the years went on by, Christmas melted into Easter, and then summer, and finally the chill kiss of the autumn winds began to blow. Winters are coming, we'd say to each other, and this one's a widow maker. Time to chop them trees till your hands blacken and them spider blisters start a popping. Mountain life was as simple as it was treacherous. Wood for the fire and you live. No wood, well, there's a place for you in the town cemetery next to the Dorsey twins and Gabby McAllister. Yes, sir. That there graveyard was a-growing near about as fast as the town. In the summer of aught seven, Diane came into my life, on the back of a fruit wagon, heading for Macon. She and what was left of her family had moved down from Gettysburg five years after the war. She lost four brothers in that war, one for the south, three for the north. The dead is dead. There ain't no taking sides in heaven. Well, sir, one look at her with a smile that could melt the rust off a froze-up pump handle, and I was hooked. Hooked tighter than a one-eyed river trout with a mouthful of fish line I was. It almost seemed as if my life started the moment I seen her. And over the next few months, I seen her nearly every day. I guess I must have brung her a field full of wildflowers in that time. Now that fall, I even made her a full-length coat for the winter. Now there weren't no deer nearabouts, and the wolves had all been hunted out, so I had to make do. I killed some 200 barn mice and one three-legged coon hound that nobody wanted no more. I took a good week just to sew the darn thing. Well, I cut off most of my own hair for the hand warmer. Love is a strong emotion. Of course, that next spring, she up and married the town barber and moved to Baton Rouge. Well, some things just ain't meant to be, I guess. Oh, the years passed, and I had my chances with others. But I believe the flame I had of burning for Diane was so hot, it just burned out. Well... Winters are coming again. I can feel it. Not so much on the outside, but deep down, down in my gut. Do I have regrets? Sometimes. It would have been nice to share those years with Diane, but you gotta make do. And I have. Besides, living with George means we can wear each other's clothes. <laughs> you gotta make do.